to make new medicine. I will give them more leaves. We are responsible Singaporean. A big thank you for them. We are forever indebted to you for the great work that you have done. With Total Defense Days just around the corner, we found out how much you know and care with our Total Defense Quiz. City Joe Chris meets a local artist whose works are about to be displayed on the moon. Damik learns to paint with his mouth just like some friends he's just met. And we walk the streets to find out how Singaporeans feel about our frontline doctors and nurses after two long years of COVID. Welcome to SG Now! Total Defence Day is coming up on 50th of February and our City Joes want to find out how much Singaporeans know and care. Let's find out! Yesterday was Total Defence Day. So right now for today's episode of Street Talk, we are going to find out exactly how much Singaporeans know about Total Defence Day. For every question that you answer correctly, you get $2. But if you answer more than 50% of the questions wrong, you'll be going home with nothing but a sweet potato. So let's hit the streets to find out. Woo! When is Total Defense Day celebrated? Oh god, um, I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Uh, I'm just gonna guess June 10. Well, that's very far off. 14 February. 14 February, is that your final answer? Yes. Oh, that's so sweet. 14 February is Valentine's Day. Oh, but Sorry. not not total defense day. 50 February? Correct! 15 Feb. 15 February, and that is the right answer. Uh 15 February. Oh, correct. Second question. Okay. How many pillars of total defense are there? Nine? <laughs> Six. Six, and is that the right answer? That is the right answer! Six. Six! And that is our first right answer! Yay! Five. Five. Close, but not answer. Five. Five? Is that the right answer? Yeah. No, that's not the right answer. Uh, six. Damn. Oh, wow, okay, that's, that's our most confident answer yet. <laughs> Alright, next question. What does the Total Defense logo mean? Oh my god, I don't know anything. Uh, we are all part of Singapore. Mm -hmm. and together we make Singapore strong. Mm -hmm. And of course it has the six, five pillars plus the crescent moon uh, represents a young rising nation. Well, this is like a GPS. <laughs> yes. Uh, Iris, the... Horoscope, is it? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> six pillars, right? That's six, right? Am I mm -hmm. right? Yeah, six pillars. Represented by? The arrows. Right? Whoa, correct. Your first correct answer. Get to the The national flag. Wait, wait, but no, this is not a national flag. Wait, wait, wait. Six pillars. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one Tikam, but get the answer correct. Huh? The next question. What are the six pillars of total defense? The president. The, the, the president. <laughs> No, the president is not! You have learned it in school, definitely. I wasn't paying attention. Oh! Paying attention. <laughs> uh, Social, economy, psychological, uh, def military defense, mm -hmm. digital defense, mm -hmm. and I've left out one. Uh, Either oh, A, B, or C. Civil defense. Civil defense, and is that the right answer? That is the right answer! Yay! Uh, social. Mm -hmm. Economy. Correct. Civil. Correct. Total. No, total. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. Military. Military. Is it military? <laughs> <laughs> yes, military. Psycho psychological. Okay, mm -hmm. one last one. Last last one cannot get help from them. <laughs> Digital. 
Yes, digital. Uh, military, okay. civil, okay. Uh, social, okay. psychological defense, okay. tumor, uh, something, economy. Some... Okay, one last one. Economy. economy is correct. Now one last one. Digital. Correct. <laughs> Here you go. Next question. The chorus of the song. There's a part for everyone. Goes. Put your something. Your something. Your something to our defense. So what are the blanks? Put your mind. Put your heart and soul and mind. Is it? Close. Not there. But. Mind or head? No. Put your heart and soul and will or might. It's, it's close again. You got two of the answers correct. Some heart of the answers and correct soul again. Soul and put your heart and soul and, and mind. Correct. And mind. last one, heart and mind and soul. No. And will, will. Heart, mind, soul. <laughs> correct. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here you go. Heart. My mind. Yes, correct. And what else? <laughs> In my heart. Yes, one last one. And then... Can you do it? Can, no. Can you, uh, can do it. Will you do it? Can, can do it. Okay. The answer, I really give you already. What's the answer? Uh, can do. No. <laughs> Put your heart, your mind, your soul to our defense. Really? Close, close. Will you answer this question for me? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, you show your will, huh? I, I answer lah, but cannot be... I don't... Mm, yeah. Mm. Put your heart, your mind. I did say heart or not? I don't think you will be able okay. to answer this question. Never mind now. You sure Never you mind. will not answer this question? <laughs> okay, if I don't answer, you sing can. <laughs> How's the, how does the song go? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is actually will. Will? Now, I give you so oh, many hints. Oh like, will you answer this question? I don't think you will be answer this question. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, it's blah, okay, blah. no problem. It's smart answer. Someone got one friends all come and help you. Very good. I like it. Okay, mm -hmm. next question. The conservation of water falls under which total defense pillar? Conservation of water. When you save water. Uh save money. Mm -hmm. So economy. Correct. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Economic. Correct! Wow, that's how, how do you know that? I don't know, I just I just suddenly remember. Correct, correct. Wow, okay, this is your yours. Economy? Is that the right answer? Yeah! Bole! Economy. Y yeah, is yeah, it the right answer? Yes, yes. You 100% sure it's the right yes, answer? Yes, yes. <laughs> Why do you think it's the right answer? Saving money saves, uh, I mean saving water saves money. Correct! Wow, here you go. Economy. Correct. Wow, this one's smart, yeah. Huh? The conservation of water. Economic. Correct. Oh, how, how you know? I'm mathematician. Mathematician. Oh, Last yeah. question. What food is associated with total defense? What food? Yeah. There's a food associated with yeah. total defense? <laughs> Think of World War II, like 1940s. Kind of poor. What do they eat? Like bread? I don't know. No, <laughs> bread was too expensive to make back then, I think. <laughs> I've never experienced enough hardship to know. <laughs> Chicken rice? No, in, in times of poverty, people don't have money to rear chickens. <laughs> rice? No, rice is in times of <laughs> wealth and prosperity. Uh, <laughs> no, not nasi lemak. In poor times, you there's only one kind of crop that oh, will grow. Oh, sweet potato. Correct! Yeah! Okay, let's see how many questions you get correct. Uh, 2, 4, 14, 16. <laughs> you got all the questions correct. And that means you get extra... 1... Oh, yeah. 2! You get $20! You got bonus because you got all our questions correct! You are the only, only participant who got all our questions correct! So congratulations! Yay! Yeah. Yeah, how do you feel about getting all the money? That money, not, not the extra. Stressful. Does it, does it inspire you to learn more about total defense? Not really. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's see how many questions do you get correct. Count, one, two, eight. So you get to keep your money. Oh, yeah. Yay. Yes, oh, you find you just nice past. <laughs> okay, you count for me. One, six. And you got more than 50% of the questions correct. So you get to keep the money. <laughs> Four dollar note. So today you bring home not money, but you bring home sweet potato. How you feel about winning the sweet potato? <laughs> Great. <laughs> How you feel about winning all this money? Okay, happy. Happy. What are you going to do with all this money? Mm, save it. So before this episode, I actually thought that people would know nothing about total defense because, right, the last time that we learned it was in school. But it seems that everyone has proved me wrong, and now I go home with an empty pocket, and I need to go to the ATM again because I need to top up my money. But congratulations to all of you winners. My name is Terjong. Signing off. Gladys, how do you think you've done with that quiz? Naturally, I would have gotten all $20. <laughs> wow! I would even have got the song lyrics right. Heart, mind, will. <laughs> and how about the sweet potato one? Would you got that one right? Okay, maybe I'll just get $18. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside though, Total Defence is vital to Singapore and we should celebrate the contributions of our servicemen and women. You know, in America, they don't just have land, sea and air defence. They even have a space force. Donald Trump started it. Wow. Well, he would, wouldn't he? I suppose it might come in handy for protecting all that art on the moon one day. Art on the moon? What are you talking about? <laughs> to explain, here's City Joe Chris talking to Singapore artist Lakshmi Mohan Babu, who will be among the first few artists in the world to have their work displayed on the moon. What's up Singapore? This is your silly Joe Chris and guess who I got here with me today? None other than Lakshmi Mohan Babu, the first Singaporean artist in space. Hi, I'm Lakshmi Mohan Babu. I'm a Singaporean artist. I'm an architect and fashion designer by training. Uh, I am now the first and only Singaporean to be selected by the Moon Gallery, the first extraterrestrial art gallery to be on the Moon before 2025, which will also fly to the International Space Station in February of 2022. I started drawing from the age of two, and that is really what inspired me to become an architect, a fashion designer, and an artist. I've illustrated books in the area of disability. I've also worked in the area of fashion and fashion art. Uh, so that's really been my entire journey towards becoming an artist of different mediums. So my art really is a blend of art and technology, or art and science. It's a blend of different cultures. It's uh, got a message of inclusivity. And I bring together all my work as an architect and fashion designer into, into my work as an artist. It's, a, it's a, a combination of the negative and the positive energies that you see in the world the negative and positive within us, the negative and positive in terms of spaces. Uh, these are the elements that I use in my artwork. I was fascinated by Lakshmi and her art. But wait till you hear about her art going to the moon. So actually for the work that is being sent to the moon, I was uh, inspired by my own paintings, the interaction series of paintings, which is something that I have started uh, working on. Uh, I had started working on about 30 years ago as a design student and it has evolved over the last 30 years and it, was, it has been translated into paintings and sculptures and a whole different range of products that interact with people in different ways and it was the basic idea of inclusivity in it and its connection to space and the universe that I thought was perfect for the moon cubes that I have finally made to be sent to the moon. And lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis, the final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble grandeur of our universe. I have enjoyed working with conventional art galleries because I do want my work to be viewed. I do want people to understand my art. I do want to have my ideas understood by them. And I want every kind of explanation that, so that they will be able to interact with my art. 
However, this is an opportunity that of a lifetime where being a part of the Moon Gallery, which is the very first extraterrestrial gallery on the Moon, was an incredible honor. So, of course, one of the main challenges that I faced while making the cube was that it had to be lightweight. It had to be less than a centimeter cube, which is really tiny. It also had to withstand all the, the conditions on the moon and in space, because the moon, if you think about it, has got extreme temperatures of day and night where temperatures can go as high as 120 degrees Celsius to as low as uh, minus 170 degrees Celsius. So I had to keep that in mind and I knew that it had to be something in a kind of metal that would be able to withstand that kind of temperature. Having said that, in the creation of it, I knew that I had to explore a number of possibilities, different kinds of metals, different kinds of manufacturing methods in the creation of the, of the cube. Of course, I did get a lot of help from NTU and NAMIC in, in, in doing that. So these were some of the challenges that I faced to create the final prototype in aluminium. One of the difficult things about being an artist, especially a woman artist, is not being taken seriously enough. Art is viewed as a, as a hobby and not a profession. So that is one of the challenge, one of the huge difficulties that I've faced. Also convincing people that I had something that had, that had meaning or value and art, you know, artworks that did have something in it. So that was very challenging when, it, when approaching galleries or people to, uh, to have my art. That was a huge challenge that I faced. What I love about art is that I can do exactly what I have, what I want to do. I have the freedom to do what I want in the time that I want without being hindered by a classroom or people or regulations. I want to continue creating works of art that are multisensory, multidisciplinary, that interacts with people with, in, from all walks of life in a multitude of ways. I want to create sculptures that I can place in different parts of the world where people are able to recognize it, identify with it, and feel like they're a part of the whole inclusivity idea that I want to convey. I do feel that my work deals with perceptions, viewpoints, reflections, how we as people are made completely differently and at the same time we are really the same. And these are ideas that I want to use to impact society, for people to understand and have conversations along these lines so that differences and biases are discussed openly my advice to an aspiring artist is to always help yourself first. Look for connections and interactions with people that are beneficial to you, because that is going to lead to interactions where you find that you have a positive impact on people. And when you start with a certain work and you have a certain path that you plan to follow, and you along the way find that there is a change of direction or an opportunity that's presented to you, do not feel like you have to follow the conventional path go ahead and take that opportunity and go forward and explore new ideas. That would be my advice to you. Singapore and its people has always aspired to achieve greater heights. This time round, however, one Singaporean has brought us to a whole new level of dimension. Thanks to Lakshmi, Singapore now has its place and its mark on the moon. And this has been your City Joe Chris for Singapore One. Oh my, Lakshmi's art is really fascinating. I love the colours and the shapes and the way it blends art and science. I like the message of inclusivity, a good message for the world, especially these days when we seem so far apart in a lot of ways. Sticking with the art of a more earthly nature, City Joe Damik met up with Stan Lee, who, after a serious bike accident that left him paralysed, discovered a flair for painting and he decided he was not going to allow his disability to hold him back. Check this out. Would you believe me if I told you that all the art on these cards were made by artists using their foot or their mouth? And they are with the MFPA, the mouth and foot are a painting artist. It's an association made to a self-help for artists who are unable to use their hands. And today, I'm going to meet a, meet a mouth painter and I'm eager to go and talk to him. I hope you are as well, because you're in for the ride. Let's go. My name is Stan Lee. Uh, my accident 16 years ago. Uh, basically, it was a bike accident. I broke my neck and uh, suffered a spinal cord injury. Uh, and I'm also affiliated with the uh, Mouth and Food Painting Association. Yeah. 
So basically, I I uses my mouth to pain. I'm paralyzed from chest down. I can't move my fingers at all. If you are willing to, could you share uh, how does this affect your day to day life? Uh, basically, on a day to day life, I would need a, a caregiver to help me in you know uh, getting things for me. You know, setting up my you know, paintings and all this. You are part of the the mouth food. A uh, painting artist, right? Could you um share how did you learn about that? Uh, it's actually through a small community that we have. Uh, the community is called Tetra DG Work Group. So one of the members inside, he is a artist from uh, Mouth and Food Painting Association. So he was the one that introduces me uh, to try and uh, pick up painting. Yeah. Oh, so that will also be your first introduction to painting itself, or do you, uh, have you had experience before it? I uh, never have any experience in uh, doing arts. Uh, the initial part was uh, not easy. I mean, uh, I have no clue on how to paint at all, you know, color mixing and everything. Could you share some struggles that you face or challenges you face? It can be with your art or any other things? Um, especially when we use our mouth to paint, uh, we have to bite under the brush, and sometimes if the distance is too near, our eyes will get uh, very tired easily. I, I cannot do big pieces. Big pieces. Yeah, like especially like uh, tall pieces of work, because mm -hmm. uh, my neck is not that long to reach out to the top of the canvas. Anything you say to aspiring artists uh, or artists? Anybody that, that like, feels like painting, just, just go ahead and do it. Like, you don't, like, never doubt yourself, especially. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is just to take the first step out and then things will just continue to work. Stanley's story has intrigued and inspired me. So, I decided to learn and pick up some painting tips from Stanley himself. Hey, you notice the metal parts to your brushes? Yeah, I told you initially uh, because the, the distance between my eyes and the canvas is very near. Yeah. Uh, I actually went to buy some you know, aluminum rods and I cut it and I, I extended the, the length of the brush. Yeah, I think it's because of the extension of my brush. So uh, I'm able to like reach higher. Yeah. Uh, so it's like a... One stone, two birds. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, correct. Ah, okay, okay. Could you share with me any like hopes or dreams you have for your art in the future? I mean, I just hope somebody can appreciate my art, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have to look far. I mean, you already found two fans. <laughs>
even know the tremendous pressure they face on a daily basis. A recent study among health workers in Australia revealed that 1 in 10 healthcare workers considered suicide during this pandemic. This is a distressing piece of information and there's definitely so much more we can do to show our appreciation and understanding. So, we've asked 30 Singaporeans how they would reward our doctors and nurses for their incredible and selfless efforts over the past two years. Here's what they said. Send them a message. Happiness in yellow. Uh, coffee vouchers. More manpower. Uh, I will make a card for them. Like I try to appreciate them in some way. Uh, free day off. The gift of hope. More recognition. I will say the model support. I will try to make new medicines. Like make food for them. I hope in the hospital setting itself, everyone will be kinder to one another. I will give them more leaves. Uh, more time and more support. Uh, flight ticket to anywhere they want to go, they deserve a break. Maybe like give them a good break. A good like vacation. Wow! <laughs> because I think they oh, really yeah. need it. Yeah. yeah. What they're doing is very heroic. And if I could anything, I would just give them a few days off so that they can enjoy some time with their family. <laughs> if I'm gone. I will give them uh, more time, you know, more time to spend for themselves, more time um, to spend with their friends and family, and more time to rest. Uh, well, if I have the authority, I would love to give them more off days. You know, buy them a trip, uh, short overseas, overseas getaway trip. For the past one and a half years, you know, a lot of them, you know, couldn't make, uh, have time off or make a trip outside. So, you know, this would be a good time for them to, you know, actually travel out. I will write cards to them and uh, congratulate them for their efforts and all their time they spend in the hospitals. Be a responsible Singaporean and just like wear a mask and social distancing and everything, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate your, 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 your doing, you know, your services. So, I would like to say a big thank you. I think thank you is not enough. It's a very small world. Uh, a big thank you for them for taking so much time to, to, to put in the work to take care of us. Yeah. I've, I've been one who always visited the clinic, so I'm very thankful that all the doctors and nurses aren't scared of patients during this critical period. We are forever indebted to you for the great work that you have done in the last two years. We've seen many families getting devastated. You were there at the forefront and really helping the entire, entire humanity for during these tough times. I'm actually very appreciative of the help that our our doctors and nurses has given to us during the COVID period and ciao. Gladys, I think the little girl who said she'll send them ice cream wins the prize for the cutest answer. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and who doesn't like ice cream, right? Yes, we love ice cream. So what's your favorite flavor? Okay, I think we should send them pistachio ice cream because that's my favourite. <laughs> my favourite is Mao San Wang ice cream. Durian ice Durian, cream? Yes. Mm. Uh, never mind, I'll send them other ice cream, alright? Yes, pistachio okay, in particular. Pistachio. All right. <laughs> anyway, that's about it for today's show. Yes, please remember to like, share, comment and subscribe. We really appreciate it when you guys get involved. That's right. Until next time, here's our tribute to our frontliners, which we hope you will share with all of your friends. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. See you soon. <laughs> this is home, truly, where I know I must be, where my dreams wait for me, where that river always flows this is home surely as my senses tell me this is where I won't be